Hi everyone. Today I will present our web conference paper, Bright: A Bridging Algorithm for Network Alignment. I'm Yu Chenyan, a second year PhD student from UIUC. My co-authors include uh, Si Zhang, uh, who is also a PhD student in UIUC, and our advisor, Dr. Han Hang Tong. Today, my presentation will be divided into five different uh, sections. Introduction, theoretical analysis, proposed model, experimental results, and the conclusions. First, network alignment. Uh, current networks are often multi-sourced. If we can combine uh, those multi-sourced networks together, we can have a better performance in some tasks, like uh, a friend recommendation in social platforms or some drug design in biological systems. So network alignment, which is very important for us to find and know the correspondence across different networks for some downstream applications. Problem definition. Uh, for semi-supervised attributed network alignment, we have two inputs. The first is to attribute the networks G1 and G2. For each network, we have the adjacency matrix A and the attributed network, uh, not attributed matrix X. In addition, we have a set of anchor node pairs L. Uh, for those L, it means that we are already know that uh, uh, for some node pairs in L, that they have been aligned together. And for the output, uh, we need to output a alignment or similarity matrix S. Uh, we can have different scenarios for this task. For example, if we do not have the attribute uh, matrix uh, X1 and X2, it uh, turns into a uh, semi-supervised plane network alignment. And if we do not have the um, anchor node set, pair set L, it uh, turns into an unsupervised attributed network alignment task. Uh, existing methods has some, uh, have some limitations. Uh, existing methods can are uh, often divided into two main categories. The first is the consistency optimization based methods. Uh, for this kind of methods, it uh, relies on the consistency assumption. For example, if two nodes should be aligned together, they should have similar attributes or local topologies. However, this kind of assumption is easily violated. For example, in the figure of this page, we can see that uh, the uh, fourth person uh, his research interest uh, turns from web mining to database after he graduated from the college. And also the fifth person, it has appeared in the LinkedIn network. However, he, he does not appear in the Google Scholar network. Uh, for the second category of methods, uh, which is uh, called embedding-based methods, in this, in this kind of methods, uh, they want to embed the nodes in two different networks and uh, in a uh, embedding space, then they will compile their, the, their, these nodes embeddings. And uh, if uh, two nodes are very close to each other and they are from different networks, they should be aligned together. However, this kind of methods will introduce the space disparity issue. Uh, like in this figure, that uh, even two isomorphic networks uh, the blue line is network one and the right line uh, uh, network two. We can see that uh, for a human, it is very easy for us to align these nodes. For example, the blue round node should be aligned to the right round node. However, uh, because they are embedded in different spaces and uh, this embedding based method cannot make them in, the, in a unified space. So the mm, blue round node has been aligned to the uh, right, the pentangle node, which is a wrong alignment. Uh, for the theoretical analysis, for the consistency optimization based methods, we have the following claims that they are essentially random work propagation of anchor links. Uh, usually, this kind of consistency optimization based methods, they have a objective function as follows. The first term is about the topology consistency that uh, if uh, X and A, they are already aligned the node pair, if Y has linked to X and uh, B has, uh, links, has links to A, so Y, B should be aligned together. The second term is about the lone anchor links, the H matrix. It is equal to the L set. Uh, 
uh, we can have the closed form solutions for this uh, consistency optimization based methods as following uh, this kind of uh, closed form solutions uh, essentially means that uh, it uh, propagates the anchor links uh, between two networks. For example, in the right part of uh, this slide, uh, we can see that uh, uh, one anchor link, it will pass along uh, the two networks from the first zero step to the first step, then to the second step, the third step, and the fourth step. It has two main drawbacks. The first is that uh, if one node pair want to get some alignment score, it must has uh, exact same steps from the anchor links. And in addition, because uh, uh, we have uh, many anchor links, uh, already low anchor links, uh, all these anchor links uh, will contribute equally for node pairs. So we, it means that uh, equal weight for all anchor links and uh, it uh, lacks some uh, uh, flexibility. Uh, for the embedding based methods, it, uh, uh, its objective function can be divided into two, two different parts. The first is the um, inner part, which means that uh, uh, we want to allow, we, we want to embed that uh, nodes with uh, edges between them closer than nodes that uh, which uh, do not have edges between them. And the second part of loss function is the closed network loss. It means that if L1 and L2 are already know uh, anchor nodes that should be aligned together, uh, we should make the distance between them uh, very small. Uh, we simply, in a simple k regular graph, uh, in this graph that uh, each node has a degree k, the consistency method loss can be simplified as following, that uh, it want to um, it want to optimize the distance between the Y and B, given that uh, A and X are already known anchor links, that uh, it want to minimize the distance between the node Y and the node B. However, for embedding method loss function, uh, it try to optimize the distance between A and B, A and X, and X, Y. So it has a relaxing relation that uh, the embedding based methods, it, they try to optimize um, uh, upper bound of the loss function of the consistency based methods. So it will has, uh, it will have some errors in the embedding um, process, uh, which means that uh, uh, because it uh, optimizes uh, um, the first network and the second network uh, uh, separately. So, uh, for example, if B and Y should be aligned together, the embedding based methods uh, they cannot uh, embed them in the same space. So there will e exist some uh, distance between B and Y. So this kind of error will accumulate uh, for the node C1, C2, and Z1, Z2. So if it uh, seems that C1 should be aligned to Z1 and C2 should be aligned to Z2. However, in most embedding based methods, C1 might be aligned to Z2, which is a wrong uh, alignment result. So this is the drawback of embedding based methods, the space disparity. The proposed model uh, to solve the drawbacks of consistency optimization based methods and the drawbacks of embedding based methods. Uh, we first, we want to use the random work with restart for flexible propagation, which can solve the exact same steps drawback of the consistency best methods. Because the random work with restart allows to restart, it means that you do not need to uh, uh, arrive uh, node pairs with the same uh, steps. And you can just arrive them with different steps. This is a relaxing for the consistency methods. And in addition, we use a linear layer, which can change uh, different ways for the scores from different anchor links. So, it also overcomes the equal weight drawbacks of consistency based methods. And for the embedding based methods, we want to um, build a unified embedding space. Uh, the key, idea are, key ideas are as following. That first, uh, because uh, um, they are trained in different space, and we want to use something that uh, they have in common to build uh, this unified space. We use anchor links as basis. Uh, in the in this figure, it has uh, five anchor links. 
And uh, for these five anchor links, for any node in these two networks, we can use the um, RWR score from the five anchor links to build a position of this node. So if uh, these two uh, networks are very similar, their, um, their RWR metrics will be very similar. And also we use uh, weight sharing components uh, for both two networks. So they will always uh, have the same weights and the parameters uh, during the uh, whole model. So uh, for example, in the right part, uh, in, for this example, uh, the right node, the, the wrong node, uh, both the blue and the uh, right wrong node, they will be aligned together and they will have uh, exact, uh, the, exactly the same embeddings when they have finished their um, embedding process. Uh, the, we have a bright U model for plane network alignment. First, we use the RWR from anchor links to build the RWR embedding matrix. And then we use a shared linear layer to adjust the anchor link width according to our key insights. For a second, uh, if uh, these two networks have, have attributes, we use another bright A model uh, based on the bright U model, bright A will use a shared two-layer GCM to capture the attributes, and at last, it will combine the RWR embedding and the GCM embedding together to get the final embeddings. Uh, for the model training, we use the ranking laws uh, uh, to train the model, and for the negative sample, uh, we use an advanced negative sampling strategy, which is uh, sort than select. In this, uh, in this negative sampling process, uh, for example, the U is negative sample. In this epoch, if uh, um, a wrong node pair that L1 on the, another node U, it, they have very close uh, embeddings. So in next epoch, we will use uh, these node pairs as the negative samples in the next epoch to improve the performance of our model. And at last, uh, we will con construct the aligned matrix. Uh, we use uh, mm, two different scenarios, and uh, for each scenario, we use uh, uh, two different uh, data sets. For the ACM DBLP data sets, we have a uh, uh, plain version and the attributed version. And uh, for the metrics, we use the heta k and the MRR. Uh, we have uh, three different baselines for the, both the plain network alignment and the attributed network alignment. These are experimental results. Uh, this is alignment results. We can observe that uh, our bright model, bright U model has an advantage of camp set in heta one on DBLP dataset. And our bright A model can achieve 99% uh, in heta ten on Cora dataset. This is the ablation study. We replace uh, the RWR model with the shortest path distance. And we can observe that the RWR module performs better than SPD. And also in attributed task, attribute plays an important role in bright A model. Uh, because if you do not have too many anchor links, uh, you will embed uh, these two networks in a totally different uh, uh, space. So under a small training ratio will reflect the ability of models uh, whether they can avoid the space disparity issue. And uh, we can observe that our model also performed very well on the small training ratio, and it can avoid the space disparity issue better. And also, at last, we um, generalize our bright model to unsupervised setting. In this setting, we just use the attributes to generate some candidate anchor links. And based on this anchor links, uh, we use our bright A model to align them. Uh, which also perform very well. Conclusions, uh, our problem is network alignment, and we propose uh, two solutions for both the plain network alignment task and the attributed network alignment task. And the results show that uh, our model outperform all baselines, and it performs well with uh, small training ratio, and it can also be generalized to unsupervised learning setting. Uh, that's uh, all about our presentation. Thank you.